Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, a lot to cover today, but I think we'll mostly focus on the new, uh, the new products. Uh, but we're starting with Lumewise Motion. So Lumewise Motion is our new product. This is now released and it's a street lighting, well, it's a motion sensor specifically for street lighting applications and also high bay applications. So Lumewise Motion really feels like a, a product of the moment. So it's it's about sustainability um, and it's about uh, and it's about sustainability because of the amount of energy that it can save a owner of a streetlight. So sustainability is at the forefront of consideration at multiple levels, you know, governments, municipalities, industries, and even utilities that, that sell us the electricity. Um, there's pressures on our global resources and um, reducing consumption will, will ease that, that pressure. So we're all experiencing the energy crisis, we're all experiencing increases in our, our utility bills. Cities um, and private owners of streetlights have that much worse than, than, than we do. So like I said, really feels like a, a product of the moment. Um, it's specifically aimed at outdoor lighting, like I said, but also um, it would be applicable for high bay lighting for um, uh, warehouses where you uh, where they run dark warehouses, uh, where you don't want to light them all the time. Um, for outdoor use, though, we're seeing around roadways, car parks, uh, parks and recreational areas, and then cycle and walkways uh, would be prime locations. So these are areas that are lit during the dark period, but there are large parts of that dark period where um, your your lighting that area but there is no activity there's no um, there's no people around so we have seen um, some people uh, some municipalities make the decision to turn off street lights um, during certain times of the, the dark period but the whole point of public lighting is it's about safety and security so if you're putting an area into darkness um, there could and, and an incident happens they they could be um, um, they could be legal action happen and they could be liable for that incident that's happened in that space. So with Lumewise Motion, um, a, the owner of the streetlights don't need to compromise. They can use um, the motion sensing capability of the sensor to detect whether there is activity in that area, and if there isn't, dim down the the lights to a to a low level. So like I said, there's no need to, to, to compromise um, so they can save energy and there is um, and they're still fulfilling their, their uh, legal requirements and their due diligence towards safety and security. So about the product itself, um, so, so Lumalized Motion uh, is part of the Zaga B4I ecosystem. Um, it's fully certified and will cover and will carry the, the Zaga D4i logo. It has two working modes. Um, so uh, it can be used as a standalone um, device, uh, which means that it's got a, an inbuilt photo cell. So Lumwise Motion has an ambient light sensor uh, built into it and it's programmed to turn the, um, the light on uh, at dusk. So once the sun starts to set and the ambient light level drops to 35 lux, the luminaire will come on. And then as the sun starts to rise um, and the ambient level gets up to 18 lux, the, the luminaire will go on. So during that dark period, if no motion is detected, um, the light it will dim the light down to 20% brightness or 20% of the output of the driver and then upon motion being detected it will go up to 100%. Um, there, like I said earlier, um, some municipalities have made the decision to turn the, the street lights um, off during certain times of the dark period and uh, we do see a number of photo cells out there um, that does part night. So this is that they will turn the lights completely off. We, as an organization, we're not recommending turning the, the, um, the street lights completely off, although we could do it with this product because of this safety and security aspect. 
and we talk about if you're if an area is in complete darkness a person is unlikely to walk into that space but if you're if you're lighting at only 20 percent brightness they can see that there is light in there they're more likely to go into that space and once they learn that it once it detects their presence and the light goes up to 100 percent brightness they will then uh, feel feel a lot more comfortable going into that space um, it's programmed with an on timer of two minutes so this is two minutes that are 100 percent brightness and after that two minutes um, it will go down to 20 percent brightness if there is a second motion detected during that two minutes the timer restarts and and the counter starts again like I said, two working modes. So standalone, it's got a, an ambient light sensor built into it, but it, a downwards facing ambient light sensor is never going to be as accurate as a, an upwards facing uh, photo cell. So this will work in conjunction with a, um, with a Zaga D4i photo cell. Um, and I'll talk about that more on the, on the next slide. Here it says works on poles from five meters to eight meters height. Um, it's more that this is the heights that we've been able to, to test at. Um, so it will work on other heights, um, but we've only been able to test on, on five to, to, to eight meter uh, tall poles. For the eight meter height, we actually had to go hire a ballroom in, in Harrisburg and, and send an engineer down with a scissor lift to be able to uh, to test at that, that height. But we've seen we've got good sensitivity and, and, and it works well at that. The same as the set for the what we're able to detect. So at the moment, we're, we've been able to detect all forms of pedestrians. So walking, running, cycling, wheelchair users. Um, it's not that it won't detect vehicles. Um, certainly um, combustion engines admit a large amount of heat, so, so infrared that we're able to detect, but we haven't been able to, to, uh, to detect uh, at speeds, so we haven't been able to test at speeds greater than 20 kilometers per hour. So it's, it's just a limit of our, our testing, not that it won't work in those scenarios. And again, with EVs, we haven't been able to test that, so, so that's a bit of an unknown at the moment. Um, we have um, masks, and I'll explain uh, explain that as well um, in the next slide. But I would just say that the masks aren't supplied with every um, Lumawise motion. This is an optional extra, and it well, was an accessory that they would have to buy in addition to the to the motion sensor. The reason we haven't um, put it in the box again is about sustainability. So if we put a, a mask, a piece of plastic in the in the box that we're promoting for sustainability and nine times out of ten it won't get used and being thrown away, then it, are we really um, selling a sustainable product? So this is a digital um, motion sensor and it, like I said, it's part of the Zaga D4i ecosystem and the communication protocol that it uses is, is the D4i communication protocol. So this is a flavor of Derby, and I'll explain that a little bit more on the next page as well. Um, based on our 80 millimeter um, Endurance S base, we tried to make it as compact as possible, but we also wanted the largest detection zone as possible. So we're, we're limited on size, not by the electronics, we could have made the electronics a lot smaller, but the, the size of the optics, the lens, is what gives us the really large detection zone and is dictating the, the size of this unit. Very low power consumption, which is also important. Um, we have, um, we pull 25 milliamps on startup that has an average power consumption of six to eight milliamps. So this is, right, and this is powered from the, the DALI bus, from the D4i bus. So it uses our Endurance S base, which as you know, is a, a four position um, uh, connector, but we are, we are only using two of those four positions. So we're using the DALI plus and the DALI minus connections. 
and DALI or D4I is a powered bus. So we can actually power it from the communication bus. Um, we're limited to 46 milliamps uh, that we can pull from the DALI bus, but as you can see, um, we are well below that. IP68 um, ingress protection and IK07 impact resistance as well. And of course, it's um, um, fully certified and, and CE compliant. Just a quick note on the Zaga D4i um, uh, architecture here. So, like I said, our device is a um, uh, is a fully certified Zaga D4i uh, device, and it's a Type B device. So, DALI, the communication protocol, is um, is a multi-master protocol, meaning that you can have more than one device. On the, on the bus telling the driver what to do, but there's no hierarchy built into it. This is why we created the D4I uh, communication protocol, which has hierarchy built into it. And we deal, and, and how we deal with this is say that um, a, a Zaga D4I Book 18 control device can be a type A device or a type B device. So you can have either a type A or a type B device connected to the luminaire, or you can have a type A and a type B, but you can't have two type A's and you can't have two type B's connected. So that's a limitation of the architecture, it's a limitation of the, of the protocol. Luminwise Motion is a true type B, and what I mean by that is, it, is that the, um, the code contains what's called an application controller. So this is the bit of the software code that tells the driver to turn on, turn off, dim to a certain level. This is why our Lumwise Motion is able to, to act as a standalone device and control the driver. So type B device, application controller, um, but as soon as a type A device, so a, a photo cell is plugged into the top there that's a, that is a type A, our product will sense that and will disable its application controller uh, and just become a sensor input device and then the type A device then takes over responsibility for telling the driver what to do. Um, so this is where you can have an upwards um, facing photo cell in case uh, you want higher accuracy for your, your ambient light levels. Um, Right, the thing that is really important with LumaWise Motion is the size of the detection zone. So we believe this is market leading. From what we've seen from other products on the, on the market, we have the largest detection zone. So at a five meter height, we can sense about 15 meters out uh, in one direction and then three meters in the other direction. So how to read these diagrams here is that we have the motion sensor uh, in the center and this th we're only showing one half of the detection zone. So our motion sensor at a height of five meters can detect, um, uh, has a detection zone of 30 meters by six meters. Um, you'll also see that we've gone for a rectangular detection zone. Some, some of our competitors have gone circular. Um, and there is user cases that, that need a circular detection zone, but rectangular seems more applicable for us. So when we're talking cycleways, roadways, aisles in, in warehouses, we're talking rectangular shapes. Um, here's an image of the, the mask. Um, here they're, they're black in color, but in reality, they're actually clear. So they're clear because they'll let the visible light in so that we can get an accurate ambient light measurement, but the polycarbonate lens blocks infrared so that we can mask off certain areas. So as we've got a detection zone that's 360 degrees in, um, in orientation, if a user doesn't want to detect behind the pole, then they can use this mask. Uh, we've got these leaf features that, that, that break away so that they can self-define their, their detection zone and, and fit these themselves. We've got this video. Now, this video is a very powerful. It shows, so, some people have said this looks like an animation. This is actually drone footage of our motion sensor in, in use. 
Um, the pole is, is just over five meters, meters tall, so just they're not very high at all. Um, and if I scroll back to the the moment of transition, so so the light is at 20% brightness, and then we go to transition here. You can see how far out this this cyclist is from the pole. So this is why we're saying market leading detection zone. And then this cyclist is wearing a heavy coat, gloves, and a cycle helmet, moving at speed, and we were still able to detect them 15 meters out. Performance is great. We're super happy with what we've been able to achieve. Uh, there's a second video here. Um, this shows Loomwise motion um, in the two node architecture with one of our customers' um, photo cells on the top that has mesh capabilities. So here, uh, you'll see the cyclists go along. Once it gets to that second pole, he, it's triggering the motion sensor and then the mesh capability of the photo cell is then turning on a whole bank of, of street lights. So this is demonstrating the whole Zaga D4i architecture. It's demonstrating our, our motion sensor working with a, a photo cell and in this case, a photo cell that has mesh capability so it can control a bunch of street lights.